Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. And this is live on the power game. Let's go, man. From around the world and across the country, from your own backyard, this is the reality of law enforcement today. For the next 60 minutes, you will be a witness. You'll see everything an officer sees, the fastest pursuits, the scariest shootouts, the most extreme and unusual crimes I need some help. ever captured on video. Police and news gathering agencies around the world have sent us this footage because they want you to see for yourself the insanity of criminal behavior. Because only when you've seen how it happens and why it happens can you make sure it doesn't happen to you. Sheriff John Bennell. As a police officer, you see everything from the terrifying to the just plain bizarre. Tonight, you're going to see some of the strangest and most unusual chases ever captured on police video. So strap yourself in, because you never know what to expect. Phoenix, Arizona. The police here have been in hundreds of pursuits, but never for reasons like these. I'm a true, true prophet of God. The man in this car claims to be a messenger of the apocalypse. To officers, this means only one thing. He's out to stir up as much trouble as possible. Earlier today, the delusional fugitive pistol whipped this man. Started hearing him yell, you know, this is Armageddon, um, you know, go home and get your guns or get out of town. Afterwards, he robbed a man at this department store for $4. Now he tears across the desert highway, blatantly running into opposing lanes. This case has gotten very dangerous very quickly. Though only on the road a short time, the man has already endangered countless lives. He makes a sudden left turn, almost hitting an oncoming driver. Police decide it's time to put an end to this nonsense. The officer is going to ram him. Oh! Lieutenant John Humphrey taps the suspect's bumper, spinning him out of control. The officers quickly close in, making sure that the man can't get away. The suspect has no choice but to crawl out of his car and surrender. There's the suspect. He's coming out. They got him. Later, after police lead the man away, he calls for a press conference, where he gives a bizarre explanation for his actions. On the power of seven, I come to preach the Sermon of Armageddon. For officers, dealing with the delusional is just another part of the job. I'm a true, true prophet of God. This man tried to justify his rampage by claiming that the end was near. This case has gotten very dangerous very quickly. And for him, he spun out. It was. Mount Vernon, Illinois. An officer finishes writing up a traffic ticket. Thanks for not taking the first one, you're free to go. That's when a distraught motorist pulls up and reports a dangerous drunk driver. He's swerving off the road. We'll take care of it, thanks. The patrolman quickly responds. He's about to walk 15 and we'll try to catch up to him. When the officer finally reaches the vehicle. The vehicle's moving at approximately 15 miles an hour. He finds the driver heading down the opposing lane of traffic. And then he makes another disturbing discovery. The vehicle is scraping along on the metal hub. The officer recognizes the danger of this situation. 
but the clearly drunk driver is oblivious. If the man thinks driving slowly will prevent him from doing damage, he better think again. Crawling at a snail's pace, the driver plows right into a mailbox. This took out a mailbox. We're pulling into the driveway. And just when it couldn't get any worse, it does. We just run into a house headquarters. Stand by. The vehicle barely avoids a stone fountain as the bare metal hub cuts up this carefully manicured lawn. The drunk driver rolls past the officer in a slow-motion getaway. Still, he can't get by this tree without sideswiping. In his sober moments, he probably knows these backwoods like the back of his hand. But in his alcoholic stupor, he has no idea what's just ahead. Suddenly, the vehicle disappears. He drove off into a creek. The officer makes his way into the gully. Don't move, police officer! And he finds the suspect trapped in his car. Backup units arrive to help rescue the driver. His door is wedged by a tree. He won't be able to get out on that side. Moments later, the suspect is pulled from the car. Go ahead and cuff him up. How come you just didn't pull over and stop for me, dude? Did I not? I think the trees made you stop. It's the end of a chase so bizarre, the officer's glad he has it on tape. Where do you see the video of this? When police learn the man's identity, they can't believe it. He's a prison guard who's had one too many after a hard day's work. But for someone who works with inmates, Pull the vehicle over. he should have known about the consequences of criminal actions. Because even at a slow speed, Driving drunk could have been deadly for everybody, especially for him. Carter County, Oklahoma. Officer Ken Turner pulls over a speeding pickup truck. The traffic stop hits a snag from the get-go. You got your insurance information with it? No, I ain't got a registration, I ain't got nothing. This is going to take a few minutes and a few calls. Before he gets started, Deputy Turner checks in with the passenger. She's fine, or so it seems. But before long, the woman becomes antsy. She gets out of the truck and tries to hurry things along. Stay with you. The officer tells her to sit tight. It's a tall order. Tired of waiting around, the impatient woman decides to speed up the process. She releases the parking brake, acting like she might take off. But the officer won't be rushed. He gives the man a sobriety test. It's bad news. He fails. The deputy returns to the passenger. He suspects she's drunk, too. How much you had to drink? And in Oklahoma, public intoxication, even for a passenger, is a crime. Though she faces a fine, at least she wasn't behind the wheel. But that's about to change. When the officer returns to his cruiser, he hears a sound that makes his heart race. He lunges for the driver's door. Not where yet. But it's too late. Deputy Turner bolts to his car and takes off. The beefy cruiser catches up quickly. From the back of the patrol car, the truck owner can only watch as the woman weaves recklessly down the road in his pickup. Driving real erratic. He has a good reason to be concerned. Clearly, his friend is in no shape to drive. She can't even stay between the lines. The foolish driver pushes her abilities, which are limited at best. She heads into the wrong lane, blazing past a truck filled with flammable liquids. This dangerous pursuit has to end soon, before disaster strikes. Another unit arrives. They try to box her in. Deputy Turner closes in on the left. Somehow, she squeezes through. Like most drunk drivers, the woman is completely lacking in fear and in judgment. They box her in again. This time, she sideswipes the cruiser. Finally, they corner the woman. 
the officers waste no time in arresting her on several serious counts. DUI, assault with a deadly weapon, and eluding an officer. What started as a simple traffic stop turned into a frightening pursuit when this restless renegade hit the road. If she had just sat still, she probably would have walked away with a small fine. Now Deputy Turner will make sure she doesn't go anywhere except to the nearest holding cell. Coming up. Look out, here we come. On world's wildest police videos. Get out of the car now. Criminal action. Come here, you ain't going nowhere. Meets hard hitting consequence. A liquored up loser. Hold the vehicle over. Meets the end of the road. A costume crook meets more than his match. And a reckless runner meets two brothers in blue. You're going to jail! This is where the bizarre and unusual Yay! meet the determined and dedicated. We have fire! Next, impact. To hit with force. Uh, a violent contact. The power to make things move. Drunks don't know when to stop drinking, and drunk drivers don't know when to stop driving, even when all the signs tell them that they should. Glenwood, Iowa. Just minutes after last call at a local tavern, Sergeant Greg Schultz tries to pull over a speeding driver. Pull the vehicle over. This man has just tossed back a few for the road. And now he doesn't want to get caught. He's still not stopping. He blows through a stop sign. It won't be his last. Meanwhile, the officers notice there's a passenger in the car. She may be an unwilling participant in this madness. They plan accordingly. Five blown stop signs later, the driver mixes it up with some patrol cars. He barely squeaks away. This is getting too dangerous. The driver leads the officers on a wild, drunken tour of the town through side roads, back roads, and front yards. He flies through 16 more stop signs in the process. He's not stopping for anything. This quiet, well-groomed street gets a rude awakening as the suspect tears up lawns and plows down mailboxes with wild abandon. Man, he's getting white, right? Officers guard the streets, keeping traffic away from the pursuit until they can corral the driver. After running stop sign number 33, the driver makes the critical error the police have been waiting for. He turns up a side street, hoping for a clean getaway. Instead, he hits a dead end. Driver, don't move! Don't move! In his drunken stupor, the man tries to escape through his window. But Sergeant Schultz convinces him not to run. Get out of the car! Get out of the car and on the ground now! The driver and the passenger wisely cooperate. Later, the officers release the woman with no charges. But the driver is arrested for driving under the influence and a list of moving violations that is almost as long as the chase itself. When this driver failed to stop, he led police officers on a traffic ticket tour of the area. But this no stopping, spark dropping, mailbox hopping, drunk driver ended up at the one stop he wanted to avoid most, the county jail. A firearm is a powerful tool in the war against crime. But with that power comes a great responsibility. Long Beach, Mississippi. Three surveillance cameras monitor a nearly empty convenience store. A lone clerk is at the register, counting the minutes until closing time. Little does she know her day is far from over. A customer enters. She asks for the clerk's help at the deli counter, which is located near the rear of the store. Meanwhile, another woman has come in, but she isn't really a woman at all. It's a man dressed in drag. The first customer is a cab driver the man hired to drive him for the day. 
a day spent shoplifting from several local stores. While the clerk helps the cabbie, the transvestite stuffs his pantyhose full of cigarette cartons. He doesn't realize the store owner is watching this event unfold on monitors in the back room. The owner comes out front and grabs a 38 revolver from under the register. Once a weapon is drawn, your adrenaline starts pumping, your nerves go on edge. This is true for an experienced officer, let alone an untrained civilian. The store owner points the gun at the shoplifter and orders him to get behind the counter. The thief stalls, keeping the counter between himself and the armed owner. He starts to unload the loot, but not where the store owner wants him to. While the clerk calls police, the owner keeps the shoplifter covered. When the shoplifter tries to edge past him, the scene quickly escalates out of control. The owner pursues the man outside, leaving the stunned cab driver and clerk on the phone with police. Moments later, the wounded shoplifter crashes the cab. The man is rushed to the hospital. It's been a shocking turn of events, but could it have been avoided? When this cross-dresser decided to go on a shoplifting spree, it was only a matter of time before he met armed resistance. And when he struck the store owner with a bottle, the man was playing with fire. The store owner wanted to protect his property, but pulling a gun may have psychologically committed him to more than he bargained for. What had begun as a shoplifting incident suddenly became a hair-trigger standoff. And once the owner got too close to the shoplifter, tensions exploded with terrifying results. The trigger is rarely pulled just once. Gunplay is an all or nothing situation. And oftentimes, people will empty the entire gun without even realizing it. Charges of manslaughter against the store owner were ultimately dropped. But he will still have to live with the consequence of his actions for the rest of his life. Ottawa Hills, Ohio. This is Officer Mark Kolzinski. This is his brother, Bob. He's on the force, too. This teenage driver is about to meet them both, up close and personal. 37's in pursuit, South Bond River Ridge. When Mark Kolzinski tried to stop him for expired tags, the teenager gunned it. South Bond Edgewood. Now a road crew blocks his path. The reckless driver swerves across a lawn, nearly plowing into a tree but Mark stays right with him. Coming up the dauber. The suspect blazes through winding streets and narrow turns. He blows past stop signs like they were green lights, turning this peaceful neighborhood into a raging obstacle course. But up ahead, the road splits, and the young suspect panics. He barrels forward, slamming into a ditch and skating on two wheels like a renegade stunt driver. But here comes Brother Bob. The suspect veers to his right, ripping through the median and shredding a tire. His car wasn't designed to take this kind of abuse. And these officers know it. He's got a flat, he ain't gonna last. Just ahead, the teen's wild ride comes to a grinding halt. Mark and his brother Bob take the suspect into custody. Yeah, because it wasn't my mom's name, and I don't have a license. That's fine. And so you ran? Yes. Go on. How stupid. The kid says he doesn't have a license. You're going to jail. I know it. But Mark suspects drug use as well. I smell hoochie. This punk thought he could outrun the law. 37's in pursuit but he didn't count on running into Mark and Bob Kolzinski. Right, he ain't gonna last. 
These brothers don't like it when someone tries to run. What a way to start the day. Next. Northbound is bad. On World's Wildest Police Video. And we have it in A car full of kids. This is the craziest thing we've seen. With a bad sense of direction. The car came flying through, just missed another car. A man in a van. Pull over. With an odd sense of style. And a four-wheeling dealer. We're in pursuit. With no sense at all. Misguided. Misplaced. And Miss October. Holy cow. Next. <laughs> Criminals. They've got sticky fingers. And lead feet. And we're at 100 miles an hour. But the long arm of the law. Come here, you, ain't, you ain't going nowhere. We'll stop them in their tracks. Every time. <laughs> Juvenile offenders. They think they have something to prove, but when they think they can outrun the law, it's up to officers to prove them wrong. Perth, Australia. The five teenagers in this stolen car are out for a wild ride. They've got two blown tires and a squad of patrol cars on their tail. His adrenaline pumping, the driver is out of control. The car came flying through, just missed another car, which was gonna turn. With four rowdy passengers egging him on, the teen tries insane maneuvers. He's also aware of all the police helicopters. And that makes him even more reckless. He treats the streets like a chaotic video game, ignoring road boundaries. And tearing along sidewalks, not caring who or what gets in his path. Units can only follow as the teens rumble down a footpath into a quiet neighborhood. It was half on the road and half on the curb, and no tires, you could smell the burning rubber. Suddenly, the suspects find themselves in a cul-de-sac. They head up a driveway, but it's blocked. The teens ditch their wheels and run for it. That looks like they're the vehicle, out of the vehicle. Policemen spread out through the neighborhood, methodically searching for the gang. Moments later, all five kids are brought into custody. The police were chasing him, and his peers were encouraging him. But the only one who wasn't paying attention to where he was going was the driver. Zanesville, Ohio. A young bear has wandered from a nearby state park and climbed up a tree. Police and park rangers try to get a large net in place before the bear decides to come down. He's gonna shoot the bear again, so he wants you out of the way here. Even though black bears are usually people shy, they become extremely dangerous when provoked. Kill you in about five seconds. Suddenly, the bear starts moving down the tree, but the officers still aren't ready with the net. The bear escapes easily, and police officers quickly give chase. But when the bear suddenly charges the cameraman, he gladly gets out of the bear's way. You know, it's just amazing how quick your priorities change when you see one of them things coming your way. The bear is now at large, jeopardizing the safety of the community. Law enforcement officials search everywhere for it. They finally discover the bear near the freeway. This time, they take no chances heavily tranquilizing the animal and loading his limp body into a steel transport drum. Go on in. From here, the park rangers will take the bear home to the woods, where he belongs, safely away from people. Harrisville, Utah. After midnight, this deserted road doesn't offer much excitement. Pull the vehicle over. But the monotony of a night patrol disappears when Officer Randy Hammock spots a van with a broken headlight. Following proper procedure, the officer first establishes that the driver is not a threat. How are you doing, sir? Okay. The man seems nervous, so the officer makes sure that he isn't intoxicated. Have you had anything to drink this evening? No. Okay. I'm gonna check your eyes, okay? Sure. Everything appears to be in order. The officer goes to write a fix-it ticket for the headlight. Officer Hammock has done everything by the book, but the book never prepared him for what he sees next. Holy cow. <laughs> the man gets out to check his headlight. 
He's dressed like a lady in red. Without the lady. <laughs> On the night patrol, the only rule of the road is that anything can happen. It's a rule that Officer Randy Hammock now knows all too well. Oh, we cow. <laughs> Four Acres, Oklahoma. After buying marijuana from an undercover officer, a drug dealer tries to run from his mistake. We're in pursuit. He's gone. We got 36. We are. Hoping to shake the pursuing officer, the suspect takes the chase off road. For months, this man has pushed drugs throughout the small community. It's obvious he doesn't care about anyone's well being but his own. The driver heads dangerously toward a front porch. The officers hope that no one comes out of the house. Back on the streets, the lead cruiser gets crippled. You got a flat. But the suspect's advantage disappears when he makes his riskiest move of the night. The reckless man runs a red light and T-bones a passing car. Amazingly, the other driver escapes with no injuries. The suspect is not so lucky. The officers rush in to find the suspect in great pain. But even as the man lies injured, the police find a reminder of exactly how dangerous he is. Hey, we got a gun! After a stint at the local hospital, it's straight to the slammer for this guy. This drug dealer tried to run from trouble. But in the end, he ran right into it. Coming up, on World's Wildest Police Video, Criminal Equations. Will a nine-year-old driver live to see 10? Will a four-footed felon get a second chance? Oh, no. And will a third-rate gymnast All right, knock it off. get one major headache? We have fire. The answers all add up to excitement next. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. Just when you think things are calming down, it starts getting bizarre. When you think you've seen it all, the unusual knocks you off your feet. Jefferson County, Nebraska. Northbound is bashed. A stolen minivan careens down the highway, and deputies are in hot pursuit. The driver of the van is a nine-year-old girl who was spotted at a stoplight by her third grade teacher. Get some backup up here. Barely able to reach the accelerator and see over the dashboard at the same time, the young girl barrels around other vehicles and races toward downtown. As she approaches the busiest street in Fairbury, deputies charge in to prevent a rush hour calamity. But even when she's surrounded, the third grader jams the pedal to the metal. Running out of time and options, deputies must get this child off the road. So they force her over to the curb as gently as they can. The girl is fine, and moments later, the naughty nine-year-old is in the back of a patrol car, wondering what her parents are going to say. It wasn't until this grade school getaway came to a halt that deputies learned the reason why this little girl stole the family car. She wanted to go to the movies. But in one action-packed afternoon, this star-struck kid quickly learned that in real life, real actions have real consequences. Largo, Florida. Officer Mark Young administers a sobriety test to a suspected drunk driver. So far, the man is not cooperating. 
This guy thinks he's sober enough to drive. He's barely sober enough to stand. Finally, Officer Young convinces the defiant driver to comply. But instead of simply following instructions, the arrogant driver decides to show off. When Officer Young demonstrates a balancing test, the driver mocks him by mugging and dancing. The man is so convinced he's passing the tests, he even decides to create his own. In a move lacking style, grace, and judgment, the man launches into a backflip and plants his face onto the concrete. Officer Young and his partner do the man a huge favor. They arrest him before he leaps again. Like most drunk drivers, this man overestimated his skills. And in the end, his own arrogance came back to smack him in the face. When we get called to the scene of a domestic break-in, we know that a suspect has violated somebody's home. What we don't know is where the suspect is right now. Millbrook, Alabama. On the day after Christmas, there has been a violent break-in. The suspect smashed a plate glass door and a wooden panel to gain access to this rural home. You the clothes, Inside, you the, the Christmas tree is ruined. The floor is littered with shattered ornaments and broken glass. I never heard of it. What kind of Grinch would do this so close to the holidays? Before officers can even begin to investigate that question, they realize the suspect may still be nearby. <laughs> the noise from the back of the house is inhuman, and for good reason. The suspect who bashed, crashed, and trashed this holiday home is not human. This 150-pound deer is responsible for all the damage. Stand there looking at me. Apparently, the deer attacked the glass door because he thought his reflection was another young buck challenging him. Now the animal is staring down the officers in the same way. The town's animal control officer is called in. The wildlife officer goes in first, with two policemen bringing up the rear. But the deer isn't going anywhere without a fight. Even when the owner of the house tries to help, the determined deer nearly gets loose. The men finally get a handle on the brawling buck, but the animal doesn't like it. And he definitely objects to having his feet tied and his face covered with a jacket. The deer keeps struggling even after he's taken outside. Moments later, the four men count down and release the deer all at once. There's only one problem. None of them took the jacket off the buck's head. Despite their blunder, the deer realizes he's been set free. He makes a break for it. Oh, no. Moments later, the blinded buck gets rid of the jacket and goes bounding oh. off back into the woods. Oh, no. The animal gets his freedom, and the family gets a post-Christmas cleanup job that will take until New Year's Day. This deer was half Bambi and half Rambo. But when the buck stopped here, his reindeer games left the family with a mess. And three officers with a reminder. This is why they call it wildlife. Up next, just went through a red light. on world's wildest police videos, a drunk driver Will you hold on a minute? gets suspended. Oh. A mediating mayor takes a swing. And some courageous cops we have fired. make a stand. No, no, yes. It's perpetual criminal motion, and it has to be stopped. And we have an NBA, NBA. The unbelievable. <laughs> the uncontrollable. The unimaginably stupid. What's wrong with me now, Sam? For officers, I ain't going nowhere. 
It's just another day on the beat. We have fire stand fire department ASAP. Livingston, Montana. An officer approaches a driver he's stopped before. The man has fallen asleep in his car. Sam. But he forgot to turn off the radio. Sam. And the engine. I'm gonna have you step out of the car and do some physical maneuvers for me. The groggy suspect stumbles over to the officer. Okay, I want you to say your ABCs from A to Z as loud and as fast as you can for me. The man is eager to please. A, B, C, D, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, 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 O, Q, R, S, T, K, U, R, S. Right now, he's having a little trouble speaking and standing. The officer makes sure the suspect has his balance, then continues with his job. Put the balls of your feet together like this, too. Just try to do it. You can't. You can't, huh? No. Okay, well, get them as close as you can. After a shaky demonstration of how not to stand, the officer concludes the man is drunk. Okay. Sam, I think you've had too much to drink. I'm going to place you under I've had two. Well, I think that's too, too many. He tries to throw on the handcuffs, but the driver has his own agenda to get away. Hold on. What's wrong? Hold on. No, come here. Come here. Hold you on. He can't understand why the officer won't let him leave. Will you hold on a minute? He resorts to childish begging. Will you understand? I will understand as soon as I get these handcuffs on you. No. Yes. No. Throughout it all, the officer has stayed calm. But now the suspect is trying his patience. No. Quit fooling with me now, Sam. Finally, the man's skirmish leads him on a downward spiral. Ow. Right into the squad car. He tried to struggle. No. Quit fooling with me. He tried to bargain. Will you hold on a minute? But mostly, he tried to stay up. After all was said and done, everything came down to one undeniable truth. When you're this drunk, I've had two. standing up is hard to do. Ow. Miami Beach, Florida. A political pressure cooker threatens to boil over. This crowd has gathered to protest the deportation of six Cuban refugees. When local officials decide not to deport the men, the crisis appears resolved, and the protest turns into a celebration. The party moves to the city of Hialeah. It looks like a festive, peaceful scene. Then a group of renegade thugs join in. The troublemakers use this gathering as an excuse to incite a riot. Officers have their hands full, trying to control the unruly mass. Even with all of this chaos, the officials don't send in the riot police. They don't want to provoke the crowd any further. What happens next is unprecedented. The Hialeah mayor himself jumps into the melee. A police officer was attacked by someone, and when I approached trying to calm the situation down, uh, one individual took a swing and hit me in the face, and so, uh, you know, the whole thing started. In the scuffle, even the chief of police takes a rock to the head. Mob mentality rages. People are fighting just for the sake of fighting. Police corral the instigators. When the suspects are in cuffs, the trouble finally subsides. It only took a couple of minutes for this political celebration to mutate into a dangerous riot. The decision not to call in special forces had a price, but it may have saved the town from an all-night riot. And now that the agitators are behind bars, they won't get a chance for a repeat performance anytime soon. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Video, a couple of hot rotting hookers on the run from the law set the night on fire. An officer always wonders if he'll survive a pursuit. The second question that goes through his head is what's going to happen once the running stops? Because it's never over until it's over. Alberta, Canada. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police charge after two female suspects who just tried to hold up a gas station. 
track in front of them. As the pursuit barrels down dark roads, the Mounties have their work cut out for them. These two criminals have prior arrests. They're prostitutes by trade, but now they're wanted for attempted armed robbery. And there's no way they're going back to prison without a fight. Passing traffic, speeds 150 kilometers an hour. The driver guns the car to speeds approaching 100 miles an hour. Officers try to coordinate a spike strip roadblock. Okay, have them set up at Highway 2. But units can't get far enough ahead to stop these rampaging fugitives. Approaching a red light. And it's getting more serious by the second. Each death-defying move convinces the driver that she's unstoppable. The vehicle just went through a red light. With this kind of recklessness, the officers are braced for the worst. The vehicle went through a second red light. And the worst is what they get. Point to a red light. The man in the other vehicle never sees the suspects coming. Strapped in his seatbelt, he escapes injury. But the women's car lights up like a tender box. We have fire, stay in our department, ASAP. The collision has punctured the gas tank. Sparks from the crash have ignited the fuel. Now these female felons are trapped inside a six-cylinder incinerator. And the same officers who were chasing these dangerous women now have to save them. If they can. Without any protective gear, and armed with only a small fire extinguisher, officers brave the scorching heat to pull the driver to safety. As the smoke and temperatures intensify, the Mounties drag the second woman out of the blistering inferno. And not a moment too soon. Flames burst from the bowels of the car and the handcuffed hookers watch as their blue Ford becomes a skeleton of scorched metal. They're lucky to be alive. On a fateful night, these two call girls took to the streets as armed robbers and did everything they could to elude the long arm of the law. But two of Canada's finest officers took on high speed and high heat to get these hardened criminals off the streets, earning them the Commissioner's Commendation Medal. We have fire! For heroism in the face of danger. You're going to jail! Cops see it all. This case has gotten very dangerous. Our car on the ground now! Hear it all. I come to preach the sermon of Armageddon. You ain't going nowhere. And feel it all. Look out, here we come. From the explosive ah! to the unexplainable. All right, knock it off. Wow. Oh. Holy cow. From the criminally insane. Truck, this is the craziest thing we've seen. To the incredibly inept. Oh. Through the good. Yeah. The bad. And the deadly. Red, red. And we have an 